Hello, friends. Welcome back to the third session of WebLogic interview and questions. So let us begin. So now the next question would be, what is JNDI? So JNDI is a Java naming and directory interface. So it is a kind of a lookup service. Okay. So why we call it as a lookup service or also we call it as a naming service? Because whenever an application need to connect with the any of the resource which we have created on the WebLogic server, it first connect with the help of JNDI. For example, if I say that we define the uh, many web logic, JMS resources, we, we create the data source as well. And then a lot of resources that we create when we configure our domain, right? And when any application need a connection from the database or any application need a need to connect with the JMS for uh, receiving or putting some message in a queue, okay? So they first connect with the JNDI, okay? And then after JNDI, it connect with the backend resource, okay? For example, there's a client application, okay, which need a connection from the database. And we all know that if application need a connection from the database, then in WebLogic server or in any application server, we have a connection pool or data source. So application will connect with the database, which is uh, with the help of data source, which we have created on the WebLogic server. For example, data source one, okay. But how this application will connect with the data source? It is help with the help of a JNDI name. Okay. For example, when we create a data source, we define a JNDI name. For example, it could be JDBC slash demo con. This is the name of JNDI in my case when I will configure my data source. And the same data source, same JNDI name will be defined in the application. Okay. So when this application needs to connect with the data source, okay, then for this application will contact the WebLogic server. Okay. And inside the WebLogic server, it will look up for the JNDI of that particular data source. And once it is connected with the JNDI of that particular data source, it will get the connection from the data source, which is assigned to that particular JNDI. And same concept is for all resources as well. For example, if we have configured the JMS and then your application need to receive some messages from the your, your queue, okay, then for each and every queue when we define, we put, we, we assign a JNDI name, okay. The same JNDI name is defined the application and that application will need to connect with the JMS, it will connect to the web logic, it will look for the J, uh, Q or topic JNDI name. And with the help of that, it will connect to the JMS services. So this is a JNDI, which is called a lookup service or naming services, which we assign as a name for the resources that we create in our web logic server. Okay. Next question, is that possible to have a cluster across multiple domains? The answer is very straightforward. No, you can't create a cluster across multiple domains. Okay, so we had a discussion in part one, two, and three as well that when we install a WebLogic, then we can create the multiple domains from a single installation. Or there could be a different installation when there could be a different domains. Okay, and then when if we say about the big and can we have a cluster that we can create across different domains? Okay, so it is not possible. That means if you have a domain one and domain two, and if you think that we can cluster the managed server between two different domains, which is not possible. So that means clustering between different domains is not allowed. Next one is what is MSI mode? Okay. Or is that possible to start managed server if admin server is not available? So MSI is a managed server independent mode. So what happens is that whenever we uh, create a domain and then after that we start managed server first time, Okay, it contact with the admin server and it sync up all the configurations in the local config directory. Okay, that means managed server create its own configuration directory, which it sync from the admin server when it start up first time. And after that, it look up for the same configuration directory whenever we are going to start. Okay, and if we do any configuration changes from the admin console, okay, and after that, if we are starting the managed server, so at that time, managed server will contact the admin server, it will sync all the new configurations, and then it will start the managed server. Okay, so this is the main point. When we start the admin server, we start the managed server, it contact the admin server first, and then it sync up all the changes, whatever they are done from the admin console, then it start the admin manage server. If there is no changes, then it will start from the configurations, okay? And a managed server that is start up without contacting its admin server to check for configuration update is running in managed server independent mode by default MSI mode is enabled. So what does it mean is that, so it means whenever a managed server start without contacting the admin server, it is called a managed server independent mode. So many times it has happened that your admin server is down due to any reasons, okay? And at that time, if you are going to start your managed server, then it will start from the local configurations. But in the same time, if maybe we have done certain configuration changes from the admin server side, and after that your admin server went down, 
okay so the new changes whatever we have done that will, would not be sync up with the managed server because your admin server is down and your managed server will not able to contact your admin server but it will start with the help of its local configuration and this is called msi or managed server independent mode and now uh, what are the different ways to start server if you talk about admin server and managed servers okay so there are different ways to start uh, admin server or managed servers okay when we talk about the admin server then is a default script come which is inside your bin folder of your domain this is start with logic.sh in unix space system dot cmd in windows apart from that you can start the admin server with the help of wlst as well and then you can even uh, you can assign your admin server to your node manager when you create a domain and then with the help of wlst you can connect to the your node manager and then you can start your admin server and when we talk about the managed server then you can start your managed server with the help of script that is provided by weblogic inside your bin folder of domain app okay by giving the syntax start manage weblogic.sh or maybe cmd the name of your managed server and the url of your admin server apart from that you can start admin managed servers from the admin console and then apart from that you can start your managed servers from the wlst script as well what is the difference between dot log and dot outlook file we have a lot of discussion on this other part one two and three as well whenever we use a node manager to start your managed server then apart from the log file of your managed server it create a separate log file with the same name of your as a managed server with dot out extension so inside your logs directory you will see two files so dot log and dot out dot log is the managed server standard output file log file and dot out is created when you create or when you start your managed server with the help of node manager is it possible to start managed server without node manager or is it mandatory to have a node manager to start your managed server okay so you can start your managed server without node manager as well that means when you are going to start start your managed server with the help of standard script provided by the weblogic inside your bin folder of domain then th that time you really don't need a node manager because it will directly contact with the admin server and then will it will start up but any time if you are going to start your managed servers from the admin console then you need a node manager so that means if you are trying to start your node man uh, managed server from the admin console but if you have not configured your node manager properly then your managed server will not get started okay and is it possible to recover admin user and password if lost maybe you have to recover only the password or maybe you are you have forgot the username and password both okay in that case yes there, there are some ways to recover that one and you can please go through my video uh, that i have posted okay with the complete details how we can recover the username and password so this is all about this part and then stay tuned for the next part thank you